This is Acts of Faith. Every day, World Team works to transform communities, make disciples, and reach the unreached. Our unique teams innovate, multiply, and expand the reach of the gospel. Our vision and aim? To make Jesus known. Together, we share the hope of the gospel on a global scale by meeting the needs of communities. These are our acts of faith. World Team has hundreds of years of experience and expertise in sending and supporting cross-cultural missionaries to plant churches among unreached peoples around the world. In response to the need and opportunity to reach the U.S. diaspora community, World Team is applying its expertise here in the U.S. Here is Director Susan. The International Neighborhood, better known as the Yin, envisions a world where the hope of Jesus is transforming communities among all peoples, starting with the nations in our backyard. God is at work in the world through mass movements of people. These people are fleeing persecution, war, starvation, and they're moving to lands that they hope that they can find security and prosperity. In the end, we're ordinary people who have been captured by Jesus' love and long to share our hope among communities where Christ is least known, many of which are represented in diaspora communities across America. Each end team evaluates best ministry practices for serving the needs of the community where they live. We do this in collaboration with individuals, local churches, and businesses. Our process is intentional, strategic, and as we serve apostolically through holistic efforts, all of our actions are rooted in our desire to share the gospel in word and deed so that the lost may be saved and participate in the body of Christ. You're going to meet a few of the end leaders who are going to share just highlights of their ministry that they've experienced over the last few years. What made you interested in reaching unreached people in the United States? I'm Brian, and this is my wife, Heather. And what made me interested was uh, a realization that we could reach people that normally would have to go over uh, a body of water to to reach for the for, for for Christ and they were right here they were in our neighborhoods and and reaching our near neighbors um, was just compelling yeah God had broken my heart to reach unreached people um, years before and I thought I'd have to go overseas and so to see how God was doing a miraculous work like we see in the book of Acts I I couldn't say no to that I'm Gwen and uh, I think what was most influential in my decision to join the inn and serve among diaspora in the U.S. was uh, really coming out of a season of discernment and prayer around, God, how would you use me in your disciple-making um, efforts in the communities that you placed me in, or where would you call? And what struck me about the inn was not just a very clear focus on seeing people and communities come to faith among, uh, among peoples that would potentially never hear about the love of Jesus otherwise, but that in serving diaspora, we were also meeting very real needs and supporting communities that have extensive challenges and making a home and a future in the places they find themselves. Um, and primarily right here in many of our major US cities. Hi, I'm Emily, and I became interested in serving in the inn after taking a missions course here in my city and discovering that refugees and immigrants lived five minutes from my apartment. I had always envisioned myself going overseas. I thought that was the way you had to do cross-cultural ministry. And when God opened my eyes to see my, my neighbors, my resettled neighbors, uh, I knew that he was calling me to serve them. And so that's how I became on the team full-time and I'm serving them today. Hello, my name is Joseph and uh, I really thank the Lord for the in uh, ministry. I was, uh, we were a missionary for nine years in the Middle East. We came back to the States in uh, 97 and the Lord put on our hearts to reach the Arabic communities in the United States. And um, 
when we found out about the end, we found out that this where God has called us to be. So we are so blessed to join uh, the International Neighborhood Network Mission. And uh, we thank the Lord that through this mission, we're able to reach the Arabic uh, communities in the uh, York uh, uh, County, Lancaster County, Harrisburg County in central Pennsylvania. And even we are reaching right now to the um, Lehigh Valley County. So we do thank the Lord for this wonderful mission and for this wonderful door that they have given us to reach the Middle Eastern Arabic speaking people. What are some of the examples of the work that you do? Um, so some of the work that we do is we reach people through um, English as a second language. Yeah, we primarily focus that outreach to women and children, which has helped us um, minister to entire families. We are able to connect with people when they first arrive um, and maintain that relationship uh, over many years. We do a number of things to reach out and um, connect with unreached people here in our city. For me, the most exciting thing is what we call Muslim Christian dialogue. And uh, we get together once a month with leaders from a local Islamic community, talk about issues of faith together. It's not a debate. It's also not one of those, one of those meetings where you agree on the same things. We disagree, um, but we agree to disagree. And it's a wonderful opportunity to, uh, to share the truth of Jesus in an atmosphere of, of listening and acceptance. Uh, great relationships come out of that. And um, just, it's just a great way to connect and present Jesus. And we also do uh, an English as a second language ministry through our church. We're trying to meet the felt needs of the community around us. And we find that that's an excellent way to make contacts. And um, because it's in our church, they come and it's, while we offer a good quality program, it's natural out. Uh, expression of who we are as Christians in our, our faith. And so it's a great platform to share that as well. One of the seasonal invitations that we are right in the middle of uh, in my city is um, building relationships around shared interests in community gardening. And, uh, and what we did this summer for the first time was partnered with a local ESL faith-based program to host conversation cafes in this garden space with the prayer that God would bless beyond the, the, the offering of you know, these cafes to bless relationships uh, with our team and these participants that could then organically and naturally carry on beyond the cafes, both within the gardening context, but outside. And we've seen some beautiful uh, friendships begin to blossom and things spin, spin offs um, from the cafes and these relationships, such as these Wednesday walks that we're doing on local trails with, um, with young moms and their children, as well as barbecues, monthly barbecues and different block parties within the garden space. And it's just a neat example of seeing both meeting real felt needs, um, but also establishing a presence and, and seeking to build community among our neighbors so that through these relationships, we can uh, branch out into spiritual conversations and more lasting long-term effective impact. My primary ministry on my team is through in-home visits. I spend a lot of time um, building deep friendships and uh, investing in my friends. And so that looks like preparing meals together, uh, going shopping together. I actually began ministry among my resettled friends by teaching a woman how to drive. And so I'm meeting physical and felt needs but also just growing deep friendships. And I also lead a training and discipleship initiative for World Team called Compass. And we invite young adults who want to find their fit in missions. And so those are two of my primary ways of ministering and sending people out to the field through, through Compass. Our uh, primary uh, ministry is uh, evangelize, uh, uh, church plant and disciple uh, the Arabic speaking people in central Pennsylvania. Uh, we have a church plant in York, PA, and we do have um, different outreaches through that base, through that church. There is uh, ESL, uh, there is a podcast on um, uh, encouraging words in Arabic to, to the uh, um, 
to the different, uh, actually goes around the globe. Uh, there's a, an outreach ministry a conference that we do have annually uh, that we try to bring people from all over the states to come to the conference to share the gospel with them. Also, we have a media ministry. Probably we'll talk about this later on. So uh, primarily, it's a uh, church planting among Arabic-speaking people, uh, winning them to Christ, uh, and Arabic-speaking people, the majority are Muslims. So uh, within the Muslim community and also the traditional Christian community. Laura, I want to circle back to you. Could you talk about your Discovery Bible study that you are hosting? Well, another thing that we are involved in is uh, Discovery Bible Studies. We have run several opportunities, and the thing I love the most about the studies is that it's very reproducible. We take simple questions that our friends can take to their friends and their families and share. It's something that they can uh, do on their own. And no matter where you are in your spiritual journey, God uses these questions to, to grab your heart right where you are. What are some of the outcomes that you have found as a result of your ministry? One of the things that's been very exciting over the years is being able to see how um, the community we minister to uh, has embraced and encouraged us to be able to teach Bible stories to women and children at our classes. And then that has spawned conversations when we go into people's homes. Um, and that is something that we maybe never thought we would be able to see happen, to see that people from unreached backgrounds who are resistant to the gospel in their home country would really be curious and want to know these stories from the Bible and start asking us questions that they would be discouraged from asking in any other setting with their community. The outcomes of our Muslim Christian dialogue have been incredible. Um, there's nothing like talking about your faith to just to stimulate real deep spiritual conversations. Um, and we, you know, I, people, my Muslim friends sometimes call me Pastor Bob, which is really amazing um, and have sought spiritual, you know, ask spiritual questions for their own lives. And um, so many, many relationships have formed that are not just friendships, but that redemptive, redemptive friendships, you could say. Uh, friendships in which um, we're, we're ministering to people and sharing the gospel with them in, in very significant ways. And even uh, through the English program, we encourage our, our teachers to use scripture and reference their own walk of faith. And we've had uh, a, a Chinese woman who was very moved by that and asked if she, she said she wanted to become a follower of Jesus. And so after class, um, the, the teacher and the assistant talked with her more. They had been talking with her for, for several weeks to begin with, but this particular moment, they said, well, would you like to you know, follow Jesus? And they had her pray in her own language. And it was just such a, a beautiful moment where um, the teacher and the assistant got to watch as this Chinese woman just was pouring out her heart in tears to the Lord, um, asking for, to, to, to follow him and to be forgiven. And it was just a beautiful moment. One of the highlights of our ESL program. Our site is still in the process of forming and establishing a presence. We're only a couple of months old at this point. And yet, even at this early stage, we are seeing some really encouraging opportunities to engage in spiritual conversations with and pray around the friends that we are forming among our international neighbors. I'm thinking particularly of a conversation I had a couple of weeks ago on one of our Wednesday morning walks on the trail and this young mom from um, from a country in Asia just opened up and shared uh, just how much she has been struggling with all of the division that she's seeing um, you know around the world as a result of all of the various levels of, of turmoil and unrest that our our country but also our world has seen in the last few months and to um, to draw it easily with her into the spiritual realm. And though we don't share the same faith tradition, she has a Buddhist background. Uh, it was 
it was so neat to see how quickly uh, just a casual walk in the park could turn into a, a deep and meaningful and hopefully one of many to come spiritual conversation. I think when you do life with people, when you do life intentionally with, with others, you, they see every part of your life and you see every part of their life. And so through that, through investing, um, going in homes weekly, um, consistently, I get to do life with my friends and I get to see um, them walk through hard times and they get to see me walk through hard times and we get to share those experiences together and then I get to point them to Christ in the middle of it and so I think the outcomes that I've seen have just been um, trust and and love and mutual respect for one another which opens the door for the gospel to be shared so I've read the bible in the home with my families I've read um, we talk about scripture all the time yesterday we quoted I quoted scripture to my friend about trusting God for with our lives and and I think that through all of that, um, every time I go into the home, I get to have spiritual conversations because they watch my life. I don't hide any part of it. And so through that investment, that is th those outcomes we're seeing eternally um, are impacting so many, so many homes that we're ministering to. When we talk about the result of the ministry, honestly, we are humbled because God has been so, so good. Uh, we've been blessed beyond measure. Um, to see people when they first come from overseas hardly have anything, looking for just the very essential thing in life uh, to come alongside of them, to help them, probably sometimes with furniture or with language, then to have them start coming to church, hear the gospel, get saved, get baptized. It is amazing. Uh, over the years, we have seen, I don't know, we... We, I don't know if we have a number, but tens of people come to the Lord and get saved. Um, we had about uh, 50 people get baptized. Uh, 20 of these people, they were from converted Muslim background and 30 from a traditional Christian background. So uh, we thank the Lord. God has been so good to us. We give him all the credit and we give him all the, uh, you know, he, the glory because it's, it's uh, through him. And it is for him. So um, we thank God. God been so good to us, to the ministry, and we are so blessed and so grateful. What advice or assurance would you give to someone if they were interested uh, to serve among unreached diaspora in the United States? Think back to some of the things that you were concerned about. What advice would you give to someone who's prayerfully considering doing diaspora ministry? For me, as far as the concerns that I had when we first started, uh, the biggest one, without a doubt, was that do I know scripture so well that I'm going to be able to quote it uh, in a way that's going to be understood? Um, the assurance that I would give anybody who's doing this is that God has given you, a as a believer in Christ, he has already given you absolutely everything you need to express his spirit to anybody spending time abiding with people that's that's really what it takes and so um the concern that anybody might not know enough um the spirit of god is enough i think for me what i would say is um look for look for a team uh while definitely god has a given us everything that we need to share the gospel with anyone because we have the risen Christ guiding us. Uh, he's also called us to be in community and, and we see that clearly through scripture. So find a team that's going to really focus on the gospel and, and not just stopping with felt needs, but moving people towards the greatest mercy we could ever share with them, which is the risen Christ as your savior who will give you an abundant life now and forever. God is bringing the nations to our neighborhoods and um, we, we really need to be focused on that. And, um, and, and, you know, how do you share Christ with your, your neighbor, your coworker, uh, the person you meet at the gym, who's from uh, a place where missionaries really, really can't go in the traditional way how do you do that? Well, the inn is provided just the context for that. And um, not only are we trained in how to do this, how to, how to approach people from a background that's different than our own and how to serve them and love them 
and in the process, uh, love them, showing them the gospel. Um, and, and not only that, you're not alone. Uh, and, you know, we, we, we have each other. We, we're, we're trained and we have teammates and uh, we work together. And that's how God calls us to work together um, with other brothers and sisters. My advice is not to wait until you're ready to just jump in, embrace the awkwardness and, and God does the rest. I just recently went through this own decision-making journey myself. And now on the other side, I'm reflecting back on that journey. There were probably the most important things where of all of the things, the potential things that I could do and all the different organizations out there doing really wonderful things, um, the most important decision-making factors in there were what, were, what was the focus and the, the mission that, you know, of the organizations I was considering and, and how did they go about doing that? And what was the supporting culture um, for those who are participating in the ministry? And, you know, having, you know, now been a part of the inn for almost a year um, and, and in ministry now, I am so grateful for the very clear focus that World Team has in seeing um, people and communities come you know, to see the church planning side and multiplication side of our ministry. Because while we have, we hold the, the how loosely and we place a high value on meeting felt needs and uh, and in embodying the love of Jesus uh, incarnationally, uh, we have such a very clear focus on, on the spiritual too, which allows us, um, allows us to continue to, to move the right balls forward while loving our neighbors well. Um, and alongside a team that you could call up basically any time of day or night and, uh, and troubleshoot together, celebrate together, weep together, all of which I've already done. And, and, uh, and it's beautiful. Um, yeah. Assurance that I would give anyone that's considering world team and joining the end would be that you, like many have said already, you don't do this alone. And I think that when I was considering joining an agency and praying about which one and, and how to find one, world team came alongside me and, and walked with me through the entire process. And I always felt very cared for and I felt very well equipped by world team, um, the leaders and just um, how long they've been doing this and and, and the team aspect, again, is so critical. And now that I get to do that with Compass Workers, I see um, the benefits of coming alongside people. And World Team does a great, a great job doing that. And so that is, has been very influential in my journey into missions. I found myself repeatedly talking about the inn. Um, after uh, praying for some time and asking the Lord, which mission agency, Lord, you want to lead us to? And there's a lot of them. They're good. But we found uh, the inn uh, is a fit for us. Um, they have a heart for the diaspora, for the immigrants. And our hearts is for the immigrants. So it is just a great blessing to see a mission uh, agency that cares, uh, just like Bob said, the word is in our backyard, they are here. So uh, it's so wonderful to see a mission that's uh, specifically praying and working and doing all they can to reach out the immigrants. So uh, we are so blessed. Uh, it, we have, it's a wonderful team. I thank the Lord for all the teams all over. They're doing a great job. We get inspired by them, and we see ourselves encouraging each other uh, all the time. So it is honestly a teamwork, regardless. Like we are in central Pennsylvania, either in Savannah, either in uh, Tennessee, but we see that all of us, we care for each other, we pray with each other, we encourage each other, and it is beautiful teamwork. So we thank the Lord, and I do encourage everybody that will hear this podcast, check it out come and visit, look at the website. Uh, we would love to uh, help you any way we can. So you've answered uh, some very specific questions. Is there anything else that you would like to share about your journey uh, in serving unreached diaspora in the United States that you haven't had a chance to share to date or on this podcast? I kind of came into this thinking a specific way. Um, the As God led 
us to minister to people cross-culturally. Um, there is a lot of advice, there's a lot of books, uh, there's a lot of information out there. And, and um, I read as much or consumed as much as I could um, and it was very interesting for me when, when the ministry of the inn kind of didn't follow any of those molds. Um, and for us specifically, we reached primarily uh, women through the Women's English Club, through our ESL program. And I, I, for at least about a year, felt that I wasn't able to connect with the men. And it, everything I tried, including going to their places of business, uh, didn't work. Um, that was weird, by the way. Don't, don't do that. Um, the, I, I couldn't connect. But once we created those, once God created those relationships, suddenly the men were compelled to talk to us as a couple, me as a man individually, because we were taking care of their families. And it was through that full connection um, that those relationships that I thought I needed to do, which was go after all the guys, God did in a much fuller and much more complete way. So what I would say as far as, as a advice and, um, you know, to throw my advice into that, into that mix of information that's out there, don't expect that God's going to do it exactly the way it says. God is going to do it the way he wants to do it. Um, I would say too, one of the things I was surprised at was how compelling uh, Christ in me and in uh, our relationship as a couple and our family, just living our everyday life. I didn't, I wasn't aware of how different we are, how distinctive Christians are, uh, because I got so used to being around other Christians. But then when I started being around immigrants and diaspora, they were drawn to um, the love, the grace, the forgiveness, the um, generosity, the um, how, how well we treat each other without thinking about it. And that has led to so many gospel conversations because Jesus is the reason for every good thing in our life not just the physical blessings, but the um, intangible blessings like love and relationship and hope in times of hard hardness and, and pain. And, and so grow deeper, get to know Jesus better and people will see it in you. Having lived overseas for um, a number of years, we're very aware of how hard it is to adjust to a new culture, to a new language, to a whole new system. And so our international friends, they could really use help with so many basic things, things that we do intuitively, um, things like registering their kids for school or getting medical bills for simple things and knowing how to pay bills, understanding um, Inter job interviews. Jo yeah, understanding how to look for a job and how to conduct yourself in an interview. Um, any legal issues, you know, there's so many things that we can respond to that uh, learning to drive and learning a new language. These are all things where we can, you know, we can be a friend and a, um, someone who can guide them in their new life and help them make this life, this, their life in America feel more like home. And of course, ultimately we want them to feel um, ready for an eternal home in heaven with Jesus. One of the things that God has continued to put before me is all of the people in scripture who he chose to call to bear his word and um, his mission in whatever context, um, uh, whatever context he's leading them to. And not one of them felt like they were ready or would have been the most likely choice. And um something that I've learned is, you know, God does wire us certain ways and give us certain gifts and passions and layers our experiences and we'll use all of those things. But, but our competencies and the things that are quote unquote in your real house or uh, that you feel you are comfortable with are not always the, the primary means for, you know, 
why God is drawing you into a context, uh, he will use those things. But, but God is the one who is moving in hearts. And he invites um, his people to, to follow along his lead and to, to abide in him and listen to his spirit so that um, God can be the one who's, who's moving. And uh, he just asks us to be obedient and to follow his call. Uh, and he equips along the way. <clears throat> and, you know, every, you know, every season you'll stop and you pause and you'll reflect back and say, oh my goodness, you know, God has done all of these different things. And very few, if any of them probably had to do with because I was really good at it. It was because I was obedient and I followed my God uh, with trust and confidence and humility. Um, and yeah, and uh, it's just amazing to see when you, when you open your hands, um, move forward in faith and obedience alongside an organization that will help you build things like competencies and experiences um, and, and will mentor and guide you along. What God can do that was outside of what was even on your radar. Something that's been really special that I didn't really anticipate before serving in the inn is how I get to invite other fellow believers to come in and serve with me. And so my best friends get to come and meet my families and get to be with me and minister to my friends. And my, my resettled friends send food home for my friends and I have to transport all this food around because they wanna do life together. And that has been incredibly special. I'm even inviting my parents in to come have dinner with my resettled friends. And so I didn't anticipate getting to invite the local church in to do life in this capacity. And so that has been really, really um, special within the end and, and something that's been encouraging. And, and I get to see our team multiplied through the local church and, and that's really special. When uh, we think about uh, how God is using the ministry uh, to help people um, uh, bridge between the culture that they came from to the American culture, it's just a great blessing. Um, that's one one of one of the beautiful results of uh, you know the ministry. Um, many of them, I have so many testimonies. Like Mamdou, who was a goldsmith back in his home country in Egypt, and he said, you know, I had gold in my hand every day. I thought I was rich, but I didn't have Jesus. But this ministry, this church, introduced me to Jesus. I didn't have gold in my hand today but I have Jesus. To me, this is worth it all. Um, yeah, Ob, he left his, his country because he was searching for Christ. And his religion, if he would uh, worship Christ in his country, uh, maybe they would kill him. But he came here, he met Christ, we baptized him, and now he's reaching uh, immigrants that are coming to America testimonies, so many of them on how the church has been bridging with these seekers, those that are looking to find the truth, to worship with freedom, and also that looking for the, um, can I say, the American dream, coming to America. Many of them, they got different visas. Many of them got like a lottery visa or immigrant visa. They come here when they find a church that speak their language take them from where they're at and then help them to get to know the language, to find job and to be uh, effective in the US society in America here. It is to us a great reward. So we thank God again, as I said before, it just this ministry is, has so much blessing that uh, we cannot thank God enough for it. To learn more about World Team's ministry opportunities, head to us.worldteam.org and click Go at the top of the page. To see prayer requests from workers in the inn and elsewhere, click Pray. This has been Acts of Faith, a podcast by World Team U.S. For more information on World Team and its ministries, visit us.worldteam.org.